Hi, good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening at the National Maritime Museum Greenwich for the second series of Needle and Skin, an exploration of tattooing culture and history. Over the next four weeks on Wednesdays at this time, we'll be taking a deep dive into various parts of the culture and history, including fashion and tattooing, the psychology around tattooing and skin decoration, plus an insight into some of the stories of the infamous tattooed ladies and their fate when no longer in fashion. Um, before I introduce you to my next guest, remember if you have any questions or comments during the discussion, please type them into the chat box, which is over to the side. And there's also the question box if you want to ask a specific question, as there'll be a Q&A at the end of this discussion. So right now, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce you, if uh, I can, and welcome my guest this evening. Hey. Um, so well, I'm so pleased to welcome um, this man. His name is Rangitu Natana, a traditional Tomoko Maori tattooist, uh, tattoo artist from, I'm going to get this name wrong, but Ontario, New Zealand. He's been practicing Tomoko for over 30 years and, ex and is experienced in both modern machine and traditional chisel methods of tattooing. Now residing in Buckinghamshire, um, kia ora te rangitu. Kia ora. Kia ora. How are you doing? Uh, uh, yeah, good, thanks. Good. Let's <laughs> begin with you and your background into Tomoko and how you became a practitioner. How did it all start for you? When did you get the interest and, you know, how did you progress? Yeah, okay. Um, first of all, I'll just kind of introduce myself. Uh, Kia ora koutou, ko te rangitu a mahau nei tana toku ingoa, no te tai toku rau a hau. Uh, ngā mihi nunui ki a koutou kua hara mai i te, I te mātaki taki me te whakarongo ki toku kōrero, tāna ki tēnei take o tātai tūpuna, uh, ngā mahi o tātai tūpuna uh, te mahi tāmoko. Nō reira, uh, taku aroha ki a koutou, katoa, uh, taku uh, noho rā, in, in, noho mai ki te kiro ki raro e te paupau te ronga rawa, ki raro, ki raro uh, ki rote te, te mea uh, aroha me te, me te rangi mārie e, i, I rote a tātou mahi. Nō reira e te mate i, I, I a koutou, um, ki ora koutou. So, my name is te rangitu Amahai Netana. Uh, so, yeah, uh, how did I get into it? Um, I guess I was lucky to be um, and very privileged to to be born into a culture um, and to to live alongside of my grandparents and uh, and my wider community. So we we were, I was brought up in a little uh, metropolis of Kaikohe in the Bay of Islands, and uh, we hail from a sub tribe called uh, Ngati Fakeke. Uh, or sub-tribe of uh, uh, iwi or a greater tribe called Ngāpuhi uh, and my grandfather is from Ngātiwe which is east coast of Whangarei or all the, the northern parts of, of uh, New Zealand and my mother is from the east coast of uh, Rotorua, uh, a little town called uh, Makata. she's Ngai Te Rangitihi so um, so I was lucky to to be born into a a, a pretty um, I don't know traditional family I'd say semi traditional family you know um, and like I said we were brought up with our grandparents so a lot of the time we were whether we were in the garden or if we had visitors they were always speaking Te Reo that was their that was their first language uh, our language and um, and very fortunate to kind of be able to, even at the time, I guess, um, we didn't really want to sit by uh, the adults, but we were kind of forced in a way to sit near the adults when they were talking about uh, lineage or when they were talking about stories and especially pertaining to our area of our mountains and our rivers and our tribal. Um, and so there was many tribal discussions because my family and especially my father and my grandfather were very into our people 
mm-hmm. and our culture and and kind of um, and looking to the future of our culture and 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 retaining those things. So we were kind of brought up in a in a family that knew that there needed to be something that was done uh, right. for our people. And so um, my father was a, a spiritual leader and uh, my grandfather was an elder and his he was a tuhunga whakapapa, so he dealt with lineage. Uh, and so many of our relations would come to visit my grandfather and speak about lineage. And so really kind of naturally it, it comes into Tāmoko, our lineage, and, and knowing Papa or understanding Papa and how we are connected not only to each other, but also to the lay of the land, uh, to our mountains and the stories of our mountains and our rivers and all of the uh, animals and, 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 uh, and the trees and, 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 the, and the plant forms that belong to those areas. Okay. And, and so what was your interest? Because obviously you were, it was very lucky, like you said, to, to have access to all of that uh, learning and wisdom and knowledge and tradition. Um, and what was the sort of path that led you into the tattooing? Were you already artistic or how did, how did Tomoko become something that you Yeah, loved? I guess. My, my father was uh, you know, all of all of us actually we had music around us all the time we had we had um, although we did not come from a carved meeting house my mother came from a carved meeting house and a lot of our area was quite oppressed uh, so a lot of our carved meeting houses were either burnt down during the wars against the British and um, or taken to museums and and things like that mm-hmm. and a lot of things were confiscated and burnt down or taken and, and, and put in museums yeah. and so we were still quite a living culture so although we did not have those in our area so much um, we, we we still had the narratives and the stories and and so my grandfather would paint my father would would draw he was a pencil artist my sisters uh-huh. are all kind of uh, doing something within the arts. Right. Uh, m- one of my sisters uh, is actually works with museums and she's a um, conservator. Okay. And so she looks after our weavings and stuff. So all of us pretty okay. much have taken the fields uh, towards helping our people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what, what age, well, what sort of, um, who did you learn from? What was the uh i guess i'm trying to find out when when the inspiration to do that okay. did you start doing tomoko uh as the first part of your sort of artistic um no not at all yeah not at all i mean i think i've always i when i first received tomoko was when i made the decision that that's what i was going to do i guess when i first uh started looking at tattooing as uh-huh. such kind of thing because my uncles they all some of them were in gangs and some of them and so we were around tattooing kind yeah. of thing. and so you know I guess I kind of fell in with the wrong or right cousins I guess and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and you know they were all wanting to get modern tattooing and they were using uh, the forms of expression from gangs as well as the black power so black fists and chains and all sorts of stars you know that was the first kind of introduction to tattooing which I did not you know I kind of looked at that as a young man and you would see because we were kind of angry young men as well Uh you know we had a lot of anger in us so we liked going to what we would deem as the richer areas and cause trouble and and uh and I guess I, I, I presented or said to my father one time that, you know, I wanted to get a tattoo, you know, I'm going to get this tattoo, all the boys are getting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And my dad approached it in, in a really surprising way. He didn't, uh, he wasn't angry and he kind of came at it in an understanding way. So he said, okay, you know, like, what do you want to do? What's it going to look like? Mm. So, so he knew, he started drawing up these pieces and I kind of said to him oh, I want it more Maori yeah. and, so my, and my dad went so okay you want something Maori so why don't you get something Maori 
And I was like, what do you mean? And, and I didn't even think about it, to be honest. It goes, well, why don't you get something from where you're from if this is about your area and this is about, so this is about the boys or your people kind of yeah. thing. Uh, what, what don't you get something from your area? And I remember going, kind of saying, okay, so what would that be? Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, a wood pigeon. <laughs> now, I mean, I remember I thinking, wood a wood pigeon. <laughs> yeah. you know, a wood pigeon. That's not very me. You know, like, yes. come on, man. Come, don't we have a hawk or something? You yeah, know? that's so tough. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, I said, why a wood pigeon? And he said, you know, a wood pigeon's just like you. And, and, and I said, how's a wood pigeon just like me? Mm. And, then, and he would say, well, you know, you see him before you, you hear him before you see him. <laughs> And I was, that's definitely me. I'm a pretty loud person and you'll hear me before you see me kind of thing. Yeah. Right. But, but he also eats the berries of the trees and, he, and, and, and they can ferment in his stomach and he can get drunk on those berries. And the berries are being a metaphor of knowledge. Oh. And so I think being um, a fair Māori and always having that, I had to be, I was always kind of striving to do a little bit better than my sisters that were darker or, my cousins that were more, more Maori because, you know, you were kind of seen as as uh, your your mother's uh, son instead of your father's son because of your colouring, right? Ah, okay. And so, uh, and so, yeah, I guess I used to go out and try and learn stuff, and I guess I used to get drunk on that knowledge, kind of thing, you know. And and, and I wasn't that humble, I guess, at those times <laughs> in those days either. Who is, yeah. Yeah, and so you know, I started. It started. I started understanding. He, he would say, you know, a wood pigeon flies forward in life; he doesn't fly backwards. He will turn his head to refer from his past to his future, and uh, mm. and that's what I liked about it. And I said, yeah, this is me. And so as soon as I kind of said that, he started drawing in a different way, and he started uh, talking about patterns and mm. and stuff, and and that started opening up a whole bunch of things for me. And when I finally got tattooed I kind of you know at first I remember thinking yeah man I'm gonna show all the boys Mm -hmm. you know and then afterwards I was like nah I'm not gonna do that you know and I remember going to see cousins and we were all kind of doing our thing and I just I just couldn't do I started realizing what my father had given in, 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 in a way he had given presented me something that I was I belonged to yeah. And, and something that I was longing for, that belonging to kind of thing, you know. And uh, it gave me a chance to kind of say, yeah, no, nah, that's not me. You know, if I go to jail, if I end up inside, I'm taking this with me and, and mm. I'm taking my ancestry and I'm, I'm taking my people with me and I'm keeping that kind of cycle kind of going. So it gave me this amazing kind of foresight to and, 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 and ability to suddenly say, actually that's what I want to do wow I want I want to kind of do this and I still had cousins that were kind of going that way so I thought you know I can do this for my cousins Mm -hmm. and so we my dad was sick and we had to move to the city and I remember walking past the tattoo shop and just having the epiphany like right I'm gonna go in there and see what I can do you know and I used to bother this tattoo shop (laughs) <laughs> and I was only 17. I don't think I was even allowed in the tattoo shop, but yeah. they didn't know that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and so I used to bother them. And then I started drawing for them. And then uh, eventually I got an apprenticeship with them. And uh, But I never started with Maori motif or, or patterns or anything like that because I didn't, it was a, it was a different scene. Sure. It, was a, it was a bikey scene and and there was drugs and there was alcohol and there's a whole bunch of things. And I knew I needed to bide my time. Yeah. And just learn and right. learn, learn what I could learn, you know. And it's, so that was about three or four years and uh-huh. in Auckland. And when I finally left, I started looking for, um, I started working in a tattoo shop, just doing your normal kind of bulldogs and roses and skulls and whatever. Sure. And uh, and then I started working on my own pieces and then realizing I used to know a lot of carvers uh, mm-hmm. in my family and cousins that were carvers. So I would go and hang out in the carving sheds and uh, sit down with the and, and they were there with these amazing fertile kind of places where where uh, different carvers would visit and you would listen to the carvers speak all night and all day kind of thing, you know, and and, and so you'd sit there just 
soaking it all in uh and 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 it was just it was it was an amazing thing uh to be to to see these things and feel these things and and start to kind of pull together your knowledge when you say carvers do you mean like wood carvers or yeah yeah so right carvers, yeah yeah, so, yeah. so the, they carve uh, carvers that at the time there's a lot of uh, bringing back the bringing back of our our marae because a lot of them had been Take kind it. of taken destroyed and and, oh. and burnt and stuff and so there was a lot of carvers and and really they were a big savior to our people and uh from the institutes and stuff so um and so there was this kind of it was it, it, this kind of move the with bring the bringing back of moko is not the first thing that has been brought back you know carving for kaido mm -hmm. weaving all of these things are slowly being cut and without those initial uh, groups uh, mm -hmm. you know tamoko wouldn't be here and so right. i think it's coming to the kind of you know that if we're going to bring back our culture uh, we have to bring everything back you know right. because it, it's all interlocked and but like you said everything's connected if you you know connected to your area the trees the mountains yeah. it's all part of us um and like so it's based on respect and dedication to both your ancestors and to the wearer of the tattoo as well. Like you said, that kind of opened up when your dad gave you that gift of sort of explaining it differently and not going, hey, you know, you know, yeah. the tattoo. Um, and 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 opened things up for you and, and a different way of thinking, perhaps. So yeah. like the significance of Tomoko to Maori culture, yeah. how would you explain that? I think it's the reconnection of things that have been severed, you know. So our fuck up of our lineage, knowing who we who we are, it's a, it's about uh, understanding your roots, where you come from. Yeah. Uh, and some people, you know, uh, they've you know, I work a lot with uh, people that, in fact, even last night, with people that have been adopted uh into you know that they they didn't even know that they were they they were uh, maori yeah so i've met people in england that have just found out that they were maori mm -hmm. and and suddenly they they found uh there's a you know they always knew there was something different about them yeah and then when they meet cousins and and even though they have british upbringing and and and, and accents yeah they start to realize wow i'm native that's what it is kind of thing you know and just the way that we 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 just it's in us and so we believe in a kind of residual kind of energy that kind of runs through our dna kind of thing and we connect to it kind of thing and mm -hmm. and and so i guess tamako becomes this um uh, it, it, it heals us it, it, okay. it reconnects us um it, it it kind of replaces and and brings back our foundations to kind of know who we are and 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 it's it's also kind of now evolving mm -hmm. I was, know, yeah it, i was going to ask you that actually has it flourished recently like has there been times when it's been out of favor or less practiced Yes, I mean, I guess there was a mass. Um, I think through Christianity and the coming of Christianity, and 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 uh, of course it was demonized and and looked upon as uh, a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, where you know, even in the islands of Samoa, uh, you know, they fought for the right to kind of have it, and they still have it. But we mm -hmm. we had a time where we actually it was we didn't practice mm -hmm. it. I think some of the last practicing was world war ii or all these oh, ones that had passed away in world war ii wow. so for a long time uh there was a i think in the 50s they tried to bring the first we we say this is the second renaissance because the uh -huh. first renaissance was really in the 50s and they but they were using needles and they didn't have the the cleaning kind of uh, uh practices and yeah. of course, we had a, a lot of sickness in those times. A lot of Polynesian peoples had kind of uh, hepatitis and, and things like that. So, right. of course, it, it, it naturally wasn't wasn't the right time kind of thing at the time. So, but we were lucky to have uh, people and relations that had memory of at least being involved in the process. Mm -hmm. And so 
just talking with other tribes as well. You know, the, the coast has had an amazing kind of and strong, um, the reason why we're where Tamako is today, I think is, is you know, you can contribute to, to a lot of the tribes that are out there today, like the East Coast of, of Gisborne and, right. and things they, they, they have, they had uh, that their relation to Puna that were there that still remembered stretching for, for, oh their fathers and wow. things like that so so we were lucky to have that great and um, course, yeah. sorry. so I was just going to say when I spoke to you before you mentioned Tamoko as a as a metaphysical language can right. you maybe explain more or open that up for us the physical language yeah do you remember that conversation no okay. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter yeah 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 <laughs> Sounded good though. Do you mean a language a language without words? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's vision. So it's um metaphysical. It's You're usually like imagery, isn't it? Even if it's yeah. in words, it's imagery to explain something. Well, you know, some you know they say that that Māori didn't have a written language. Okay. Uh, you know, so you know we we were we we're we we're, we're a language. We pass out our, our knowledge through kind of a verbal. Kind of right oral tradition yeah oral tradition and um and actually i don't think that's true we actually have six ways of writing our language it's just <laughs> not phonetic kind of thing right. so, so we have carving we have weaving we have painting we have dance we have a, a fight court at all you have hand actions okay and 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 then you 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 also have tamako so tamako is a a, a form of language uh, that would relay the person's lineage so you could read the person's lineage you could read what the person did or what they knew wow. their their matauranga, their knowledge and so that was written either on their body or their face okay. what they had achieved and in a way their wealth uh, was written on their body so and and their and you know their uh, it was like i guess their soul was was uh, turned inside out, so you could read them, and so there were no lies between us, and 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 there was uh, knowing that we had laws, we had natural laws, and if you were wearing those those mm -hmm. uh, those patterns, then you had you obviously pertained and uh, and and practiced those kind of laws, and so we didn't need. Uh, policing and such kind of mm -hmm. thing that we have today we we had honor and we had a lot of other things that that really the, there was far worse things than being arrested or far worse mm -hmm. things of even dying kind of thing you know uh, you could still be alive and be punished kind of thing right. so, and you know and to be shunned or to be uh, not allowed in or that mm -hmm. you were cut off to your family that that was pretty much That's the living heavy. death yeah uh, and it would it would it would put you in your own prison kind of thing so so it it, it bound you to your laws and laws of, of nature from what you were wearing okay i mean you you um you mentioned as well that you work in you work creating schools uh in new zealand um working with people there indigenous people what kind of work were you doing um and what were you teaching them I guess, um, you know, working with other Polynesian groups uh, like Hawaii and, mm -hmm. and, and other indigenous uh, practitioners, mm -hmm. you, we, we, we all kind of, when we kind of sit together at, at tattoo shows and things like that, we go to the hotel rooms and we start to come up with theories and understanding of how are we going to, how do we kind of present this to our children? And, yeah. and, and, and where's the best place to do that? So, you know, all of us have gone away back into our communities and, uh, and we have approached our schools and, and um, our primary schools, our colleges, our intermediates, and, 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 uh, and they've really supported us. So we come into the schools and we start talking to them and, and, and we provide or we try to create uh, courses that we can do with the kids to understand patterns to begin with and how they're connected to those patterns so we can kind of go walking in in our area and and talk of the same things that our grandfathers and grandmothers have talked about and how we looked how they looked at things kind of thing so they start to understand and even even when we do tattooing or do our our practice 
uh, we we influence our children to be there and and to right. to witness the ceremonies and the prayers and the things that are said because in those kind of times when you're when you're being um, tattooed uh, mm-hmm. or receiving tamoko, um, you you also have uh, magic times where elders will share uh, songs or, mm-hmm. or lineage or or, or whaka papa that they never would ever kind of share in any other it was it's the right time to use those things so so because we've brought this practice back it's also given uh fertile ground for them to share these kind of and feel comfortable this yeah. is the right place to share these kind of songs and these these narratives that they've been holding inside kind of thing you know because, exactly it you know, sounds so, much more organic and 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 uh like a a better way than if you you know if you just go to school and you just have lessons and it's but it's sort of like cut outside it's not it's outside of the the ceremony or the thing that you're talking about then yeah. it it doesn't always connect to something it doesn't mean something to children if you yeah. if you could if you cut them off from yeah. what you're doing i guess yeah um, i think it makes a stronger mm. a stronger person a stronger uh, you know to be uh, mindful about understanding who they are first and we need to build their foundations and and teach them about who they are so they have the confidence to kind of then kind of take on a different culture's way of thinking but i think um you know um our children are, are lucky and rich and then i'm being a child at one point you know uh you know i i understand and i can understand what, what they were they're going through so um and and what they need to kind of um to to feel confident as a young person and to feel confident about being polynesian even or being maori kind of thing there was a time that it wasn't oh uh, yeah when you went when you went to school was there was there much in the i mean there wasn't much in the history books about um what had happened to maori culture and there was nothing um, there was nothing if it, if it was it probably derogatory or something yeah most yeah times. Yeah, I mean, you still have, you still had, uh, you know, statues and uh, symbols that are still in your kind of uh, towns that were, you know, they they would honour the British soldiers that died in in the war and the the kind of wordings that they would put as how they died and who they died by, mm. you know, and and really, you as a Maori was, would think those were my ancestors. But they're made to be these bad people but they were protecting their lands and yeah. so they were freedom fighters they were fighting for their freedom you know over ridiculous things you know over land and over you know uh over, over taxing of our dogs and you know they would find every excuse to try to kind of and so even more belittling i think at school you 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 get this kind of um this guilt that's placed on you mm-hmm. as well you know mm-hmm. that, that you're a bad person yeah uh, you're you know you're lazy you're you're you know and then my father would go to work and he wasn't allowed to speak his language and mm. he could be fired at any time so he was being belittled at, at work kind of thing you know and 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 so you would see your parents do that and of course that's why the gangs became uh you know we would see these men maori and they would they wouldn't they wouldn't be scared of the police yeah they would tell the police to go get whatever yeah yeah and we were going yeah you know finally someone's standing up to these it's guys like warrior yeah 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 and and of course it was a negative kind of thing but you know that's what made it you know we were kind of wow okay because you would see your dad and one half of my dad was a very peaceful man and he and but at, at work he he was you know, in, in our culture, my dad was was had a standing, and in in in, a, in his work, he wasn't. He never made boss, put it that mm. way, for thirty something years. But but I guess like that's the aftermath of colonization and missionaries, yeah. and and you take away people's language, their culture, traditions, you dehumanize them in a way. So like whatever you do to them, it's not really seen as bad because it's like they're lesser. And yes. that's how you that's one way you yeah. do that to people. And and that there's a a, ba- a long, long shadow from that that doesn't go away that affects people. No. Yeah, totally. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. And so in schools, no, there wasn't. I think I just, when I just got to college, I guess, um, <coughs> I remember in 1988, I was in intermediate and there was still no, nothing Māori. And then they started to have, they brought kapahaka, which is our, our traditional dance, mm -hmm. uh, into schools. And you could have kapahaka club kind of thing and you would go along and do that. I mean, school and my home life were two different things. I loved my home life. You know, we were surrounded by grandparents and every Sunday or Saturday we were down at the, at the, at the marae at our kind of longhouse and, and we would meet with cousins and there was, that, there was two different cultures, even though people, I think, in New Zealand argue you can't have two different laws for two different people, but we've always had two different yes. things, you know. And yeah. so it's like we've only known two different things, kind of thing. So how can you say this is one <laughs> kind of thing, you know? So, um, yeah. and so uh, of course now, and of course uh, you know when, uh, you know now we have uh, places in Māori. Māori is is huge in all of our schools and bilingual right. schools, and and uh, we have full immersion schools now, and right. and and I think uh, soon we'll, it'll be compulsory to to speak our language so cool. that's a great thing yeah um let's go on to the actual tomoko um okay. you know i'm probably saying it wrong the whole time um and you've sent me some great images um you can probably we can show some of these while you're talking as well um one of the interesting things <clears throat> about the traditional sort of chisel method that you use is and uh, was a surprise to me uh, i didn't know about this about you need more than one person like there's uh if we go on to this first one yeah you need a uh, um a skin stretcher as well yeah. um but yeah so do they have to train up as well what's the story with the person that you get to stretch the skin like how does I that think work well, I think for me, that's how I, I learned. Um, and, and, and for me, I, I started stretching kind of thing and knowing how to stretch the skin and how the skin almost has a grain. And so you've got to know where to pull it. And your, I guess your job is to, as, uh, as a stretcher, to, to present the skin to, um, to the tohunga, to the, to, 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 uh, the practitioner mm -hmm. uh and so you got to make the job you uh, in a way you got to work alongside of each other so you get to know what different movements and different things are after a while you'll start to work with each other and so i think the whole pr process of traditional tattooing as well as that's its strength it, it's not like a machine is very kind of in one person's hand and 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 sometimes very egotistical you know Mm -hmm. And so um, I think in traditional process, um, it's, it's sh the responsibility is shared. It's a shared responsibility. So right. the stretcher has to be um, very tuned into uh, who, he, who, who he's working with or who she's right. working with. Yeah. And, and so you've got to kind of work together to make the, to make the piece even, you can, it can either slow it down or speed it up, you know? So right. um depending on how long you've been working together and eat and the longer you work together it gets faster and faster you get to know each other and and what needs to happen without even talking okay. um and then of course she or he is not stretching for me as well as also stretching for the person because you can stretch to make it easier uh pain wise and um yeah i guess um they you know, I, I also, my daughter is helping me in this photo. And so um, I also teach her the pattern and where I'm going to start and where I'm going to finish. Right. So she, get, she gets to know the patterns while we're working. Um, she understands the language and how to, how I do it. And, and of course, hopefully one day, if she picks up the tools, um, that, that she'll, she'll also be thinking, I know I did when I was, when I was stretching and, and for someone, I, I was always thinking how I would do it and 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 oh, it would always be going through your head. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, that's how you kind of much learn. It, yeah, it sounds like actually a really good way to learn because I imagine the first time 
people do start to try to do uh, tattooing or tomoko that like that you couldn't just land on someone and do it um, no. And that yeah. would, because you said like the skin is malleable and things and how the, the instruments you're using, the tools you use, let's have, um, you, you said that you individually named them and the piece, the, even the material around them, because yeah. they all have so they, I guess when you're building something uh, by hand, uh, it starts to take on a characteristic because you design it sometimes for, um, uh, a certain a certain thing that it can do a certain thing a smaller or bigger or more detail so you're building each one has a, as you're building it, it it creates a kind of its own character and so uh, down to sharpening the teeth and so they're made up of uh, various things um, the teeth are, uh, traditionally back home they were either made out of albatross or, or a type of long a, a bird bird bones and human mm -hmm. bone. So uh, for the bigger tools, mainly for legs and, and stuff where uh, traditionally back home, we used uh, human human bone. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also used a lot of bird bone because that's what we had. And I kind of, you know, going into museums and looking at the different islands. And if you kind of have a look, they, they basically, um, we would have used anything that was that it was in our environment to use kind of thing. So they practiced with different various bones, but we found certain birds like the albatross. Um, it was a, it's a very greasy bone. So mm -hmm. it naturally uh, um, deflects any ink or, or blood. Oh, um, okay. And so it's easily cleaned. Um, depending on the age of the albatross, uh, it, it can depend on how it, it keeps its blade and how, how sharp it keeps. Um, sometimes, you, I mean, every time you use them, you've got to go through them and, and, and resharpen and, 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 and get them back to a kind of, uh, a good kind of, so you can use them again. Yeah, so they, so, get, so, they, so they blunt after a while, so you have to sharpen oh yeah. them again. Right. So you got to sharpen them and you got to kind of maintain them. And, and, you know, they have their own, they have their own life force in a way. So, you know, you talk to them and you have prayers for them and you wake them up and you put them to sleep and they, you have your own ways of doing things. So um, they, they're, they're kind of treated like your children. Um, mm -hmm. I worry about them, you know, and I worry where they are. And, and, and sometimes I just wake them up to see if they're all right kind of thing and, and, uh, and oil them. And, and so even the weavings, the lashings, um, the bindings they have their own names mm -hmm. um and they mean different things too um and you know our la lashings for for our people for polynesia to la we lashed everything we lashed our houses we lashed uh -huh. our our canoes we lashed everything and 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 they they kind of talk uh, in a way when the when the lashing moves yeah it gives, it gives uh, uh i guess a suppleness to 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 the work it's almost a spring it moves and it, and it makes it kind of malleable to what you're working so it's not just a solid thing i think you know so if the whole thing was made of a solid piece of steel it would be a very painful kind of process because uh because it has no movement in it, you know so yeah. when, so everything it's all deliberate while it, while it's sitting there people will kind of look at it and think oh it's lashed okay i can do that but actually there are specific kind of things to it. And yeah, they remind up. us, they remind the lashing reminds us of messages and stories and things, how to be. And, and so they talk to you kind of thing. And, 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 uh, and if you're not right, they, they'll tell you kind of thing. If things aren't right, if you haven't done something right, uh, it just won't work kind of thing. So there, there are protocols and traditions that we, uh, we'll probably uh, we'll, we'll uh, listen to to kind of um, to, 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 to guide us kind mm. of thing, making sure that we're doing things right. <laughs> so, so quite different to using um, a regular tattoo machine, obviously, uh, because that's 
purely metal. I mean, for you, you use both and you mentioned it already, but what would be the main differences apart from that these objects and tools that you have here are like, like you said, they're malleable, they're talking, they're, they're like, they're embodied they're also, spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're made up of, of, of uh, trees because you're gathering them from your own area. Uh -huh. or from areas my ones are, are, are being gathered um, in Hawaii and in traditional places under kind of uh, in a respectful way and so the whole gathering of those things and, and, and making something from from um, from the top down kind of thing or the up, uh, bottom up kind of thing it's it's the whole process the whole gathering of it and and right. and where you're gathering those pieces from, and how they connect us. So the the albatross, um, they've all been gifted to me from from relations that knew that I needed those things, and uh, they'd be given to me as gifts. The ink that I use, uh, the traditional ink that I make, yeah. has been gathered from particular trees uh, that we know of, kind of thing, and so. It it's reinforces that whole lineage of the of of the tool, so that line, that tool has lineage. It has just like I do, kind of thing, and and it's an older lineage than my lineage. Um, you know, my lineage. Uh, uh, so so uh, what I mean by that is that we're related to everything, right? So even a blade of grass is our relation, and. and and so um, we 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 must revere that because it's our album, and so uh, our tools are older than us, uh, uh, you know, in 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 the makeup of things of the tree and of the bird, and yeah, yeah. so and so we have lineage. And we can tie ourselves to our tools through our lineage back to Tane, to the forest, and. Uh, and and to the birds and the different animals that uh, that are on this earth kind of thing so we're related to these things um and so uh we when we kind of build them into what they are today whether we're using uh, human bone or, or or albatross bone we 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 give it life another life and we turn it into something else and then of course that gives someone else another life and it turns them into something else and so it's a it's a healing. So we're healing ourselves using our lineage and using our knowledge and the fucker papa, the, the knowledge that we come from, uh, from our gods, uh, from our from our tane, from our god of the forest, from our from our atua and the different legends that we come from, or stories that we come from, narratives that we come from. Um what what is the process if we could see another um as well slide please you here but what is the process for someone who wants to have you do a tattoo in this style in this way tradition um it's hard you know over here um at, back home would be easier because right. back home normally i would have someone stay with me for more than more than a day you know they we would get to know each other yeah. that's the that's the biggest thing i think is getting to know each other and um and trust i guess needs to be formed between sure. each other so i need to know whether the person can carry it and will carry it with respect and not just collecting i guess it's uh, for me i i um i found it hard when i first came over to england i mm -hmm. did shows and i would do uh traditional tool work but then i found it wasn't it just wasn't the right place to 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 have them you know um it was a really different feeling i was so used to more back home we would um um we would go to uh, to, to sacred areas where our ancestors the last ancestor of a person was tattooed mm -hmm. and of course the elders would be invited and and the relations would be invited and and the ceremony would take place under a tree the last place where okay. this person's ancestor is tattooed so you know, and then you take that uh, and, you, and you put it in, into or you try to come to a tattoo show over here and it's very industry driven, you know, sure. um, it's, it's, it's not every, everybody's just, oh, yeah, what am I going to get? And I used to have a lot of material out, written material that people could read and, and learn about things, but 
really it just became a curiosity kind of thing sure. and, and um, I didn't I didn't feel like it was the right place to kind of do it really so okay. the process of kind of getting it today is really that is just getting to know a person I need to spend time with a person makes sense yep I'm, I'm kind of mindful that we've got four oh sorry not 45 minutes we've got 15 minutes oh frozen oh no it's frozen. our designs sorry how how appropriate is it for a person of non-maori descent to get tattooed with maori designs what you know what's your sort of advice or what what do you do i think you know if you're going to get tattooed with maori designs don't go to someone that isn't maori mm -hmm. i mean they may know a little bit but they just don't know anything really kind of thing yeah. so so i mean even if people say go to get i mean there's some beautiful artists out there and don't get me wrong i probably know a lot of them yeah and they're beautiful art but it's like buy you you know you can buy a kind of fake Rolex or you can buy a, a real Rolex you know why buy a fake Rolex if you can get a real Rolex kind of thing and maybe the people over here don't realize what they're looking at but we do and we're still alive you know yeah. we're not we're not dead kind of thing we we can read it kind of thing and, and I've seen right. guys that are wearing things backwards uh, things are facing the wrong way. They may have yeah. had more than one child in their lives, kind of thing. Like they gave birth or something, you know. And yeah. it's like they're wearing female patterns. They're wearing, you know, and you're like, wow, wow, you okay. know. So you're walking yeah. around, and 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 to be honest, these patterns are very old. They're not. They they can if you do things right, they they can open so many amazing things for you. You know, they're spiritual kind of things and so when you get it done wrong it's um even if you get it covered up it doesn't help because it's already mm -hmm. been done you know for us it's already been done kind of thing you know you can't cover something up it's still underneath there kind of thing yes. so i would say if you were to get traditional tool uh, traditional work go to something that someone that knows actually knows what they're doing and go to a maori or a Samoan. You know, um, I know there's not many Samoans in Māori uh, in New England, possibly, that practice this. Yes. But that's what makes it special, you know, and that's what makes it amazing. Because I think it, a part of that is the walk, and 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 you and you, it can't be easy. Nothing is easy, and 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 it's good that it isn't easy. Yes. The harder yes. it is, the harder it is, the better it is, kind of thing, you know. And, that's that's amazing. Sorry, that's amazing tattoo right there on the shoulder or the, yeah, the arm, the shoulder, like the interest, interest. I can't even say the word, but it's really detailed. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 So that's a kind of uh, blend of ta uh, taniko, which is a weaving pattern, uh, our female weaving patterns. And that's uh, a band that we would place on a korowai, on a cloak. Oh. And it also, so those are the two uh, patterns that came from Rarohinga. Tāmoko was given uh, to Mataora and Tāniko was given to uh, Niwaireka. And so that shows the balance of the female whakapapa lineage and the male as well. And, oh. um, and so that's why you, I use that lineal patterns and of course the curval lineal kind of patterns. Right. Um, one of the sorry, one of the interesting things that you you mentioned as well last time was like in England when people have come to get tattoos tattooed by you, um, that because you need to get to know them and their stories because you're kind of putting like you said before their story on them or their lineage or or their you know so you want to hear their story and talk to them and you said like men come who aren't used to talking about their personal stories they don't really yeah. know how to it's like it's that's a cultural, interesting it's yeah. a cultural thing eh? i think because males aren't being brought up like in our <laughs> culture we're brought up to speak we we know mm -hmm. that we will have to play a speaking role as males so uh, we're encouraged a lot to speak uh, uh and, and speak our truth really 
and even as in, in friends, my friends, the way that we uh, are together, we know we have a responsibility to that way of speaking. So we have almost like two two types of languages. You have your party language, and then you have a a different language kind of thing when you're in 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 a certain uh, way. There's there's a way of speaking, and I think it's the way the conduct that we also have towards each other. Uh, there's a respectful way of speaking. And so that's what our protocols really are. Uh, there's, there's, there's a right way of saying something and a wrong way of something, they're saying something. Because we were quite warlike, we needed to know those, those, those intricacies of, of language and, and speaking properly. So yeah, it's really tough. You know, um, I get a lot of guys that, and I, and I spend a lot of time trying to draw out as much information. And, but there's a, there, 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 there is a kind of, um, you know, there, there, there's, there's a something of a loss there, kind of thing. And I'm trying to build on those things to try to, and, and so it's been amazing. And when you do, I've worked with, I work with a guy. I always talk about him. He's from Lewis, and he's a Scottish heritage. And and up there, they, they, he, his aunties are weavers, and they, they do Harris tweed. Right. And of course, I would build, and then so that's what I did. I asked for the weaving patterns of his aunties, and uh, and how his grandmother stacked the peat, as she had a certain way of stacking peat, and he had photographs of these oh, wow. peat stacks, you know. And so we used those patterns, uh, which which you know enforced a, a great, you know, this is really this is yours, this is your yeah. papa, you know, this is your lineage. This is what should be tattooed on you. And and he saw this, you know, and it just created this. I'm sure indigenous people right around the world, whether you be Welsh or Scottish and, or, or from Canada or, or wherever, we all think like this kind of thing because our common denominator is our, uh -huh. is our earth and is our lands and is our mothers uh -huh. and our grandmothers because they were given the gift of life just like, the gods kind of thing you know and that's why they should be revered as such kind of thing so and they have these beautiful narratives already you know anyway i'll go on a bit um yeah that's that's really cool and it's good it sounds like they they probably get like um a therapy session in a way <laughs> included <laughs> i think we both do you know we, yeah. it's a bit of a, a give and take you know depending on how i'm feeling in the <laughs> um, um are there like how how long do some of these tattoos take because like i said they're really incredibly detailed and um, to do, yeah about uh, sometimes five to eight hours um okay. a, a smaller one would be about five hours depending on the position of the body as well right um, but you could be spending a long oh yeah like last night was a nine hour session um but you get wow. lost in it you know and 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 really i feel i felt uh, you you i think as as a tamoko practitioner you you really feel for the person you know and, and you've got to feel for the person or what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Because your responsibility is to put the appropriate pattern on them because you know it's going to help them as they go through. It's not about just collecting, you know, oh, uh, tomorrow I'm going to get my arm done and then after that I'm going to get my chest done. Yeah. I always ask them to go away and, and live with it for a little while. You know, don't come back next week, right. uh, you know, unless I haven't finished. But, um, <laughs> but... But don't come back in a hurry, you know, go learn what I've taught you and, and, and let them settle for, with you and, and think about it. Because I can also, I, I kind of teach people a little bit about the classical meanings of it. But I think right. it doesn't live until a person makes it theirs. So they got to find their own way of explaining what I've just explained to them. It has, a, it, they have a, a traditional narrative but then you have to adapt it to who you are as a person. And sometimes they get it and they, they, they understand what that means. And, and mm -hmm. it takes a long, and at the moment, uh, working with people over here is still at a very shallow level. You know, we're dealing mm -hmm. at a very shallow level. Back home, we've mm -hmm. got lower, heavier levels kind of thing. And, and, and so, um, yeah, back home is a lot, lot heavier, the things that we're dealing with kind of thing. So, we're in the initial stages over here. Yeah, it's great. 
Um, as an artist, do you express yourself in other forms now or yeah? Sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think for me is working with my hands as a, as a meditation, you know, so um, I like working with my hands in a lot of things. And, um, and it's how really things sink in to me is when I work with my hands. So I like painting and uh, a little bit of carving, um, drawing and anything, anything I can get. I like creating and I like making. Things. Okay, I mean, one of the interesting things is you have a um, connection with Hermes. Yeah. Um, you're doing some designs for them. Tell us about how did that happen? What's the story? Um, I, I, I just, I guess I was in the right place at the right time and I was lucky uh, they were looking for a uh, Maori artist and I got to have a meeting with them. And, um, and uh, yeah, so they asked if I could kind of create something uh, and then show them what my idea was and present them with an idea. And so I did that and they loved it. And so I kind of worked with, um, you know, they're in a position that is great that there's a message. It can be a platform to be message to the people about our environment. And so I wanted it to be about how we looked at our environment as Native people. Uh -huh. And so, uh, and they totally understood that. And, and I was really lucky as well, because they were in that, that they wanted to, to say something too, you know, so it's a collaborational piece. The first piece that I worked on uh, was about uh, the house of Hermes and, and, and the house, our house and the way that we look at our houses, our traditional houses and how they're built. And uh, there are our universities, really, our traditional houses. That's where we learn our, our local narratives. And so I placed within the pattern um, stories to as in a directional kind of story, something that they that a person when they when they look at it, uh, they can also dive into it in a way of understanding what they're wearing, kind of thing, you know. And it moves, you can move it in different directions because I was dealing with a square. Okay, so depending, yeah. depending on what that person or how they wear it, they're saying something, you know. Okay. And so there's one direction that talks about how we've forgotten the, the heartbeat of our, of our mother, which is of, of Mother Earth, mm -hmm. and how the waves uh, uh, that beat a, a, against the canoe um the, the navigator could listen and hear and they could tell where land was by using using their ears kind of thing so they were listening to the heartbeat of the of of the earth kind of thing from through tangaroa you know through the ocean kind of thing. Right. and how they would listen to the whales and understand where the whales were and and so a canoe wasn't just a canoe it was a living vessel as well uh -huh. and had these amazing these just the amazing ways that we used our environment and we were a part of our environment um yeah it sounds like really attuned to everything sure so i did a lot of kind of patterns that that kind of really spoke to people hopefully that that if people are what you know i guess you know uh, it, it, it's it's kind of you know that that's the kind of platform or the people that we need to kind of really influence hopefully ones with money to kind of look at really how we're using our kind of resources and and how we can maybe help this earth and help each other really to understand that uh that our people have been looking after the earth for a long time kind of thing you know and and now it's 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 something you know but maybe we need to kind of um share with people one another about hey there's there's other ways of looking at things i mean that's one of the really nice well one of the really good things about this i mean you you mentioned before as well like that even though people have stolen a lot of things and and designs and and so many things from your culture that your culture isn't a culture of suing people so what you would rather do is explain to people what it's from, what it's doing, what it means, and share it, that. Yeah, I guess, you know, I, I, I think I like to approach things in more of a native way, you know, mm. 
and and if if someone in our tribe has kind of gone off the road it's my job to kind of pull them back on the road kind of thing you know and and really uh and and really kind of educate the person about something I'm, you know there's only so far you can go but i just i just think if we have any kind of i i, I work we've just started an indigenous uh, practitioners uh, association uh, in this in the world kind of thing so we have a lot of members from around the world and we're talking about uh, it's just a council so we can counsel and talk about some of the situations and the problems that we come across with um, the the western tattooists constantly taking and and, and tattooing and and companies using patterns and 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 all of those kind of things. So just a place we can talk about it. But a lot of the time we're kind of also thinking, you know, we can't, you know, suing a person and that's not really us, you know. Yeah. And I think um, we we need to find more native ways of approaching the situation, the problem, and and we're great at turning something negative into something positive. And, uh, and and that's what makes us survivors kind of things, you know. So, and hopefully we can kind of work together and, and start actually looking at, you know, what are they actually trying to belong to? I remember in my life, there was a time that, that I wanted to belong and I had a loss of belonging uh, yeah. to something and it was right in front of me. And if it wasn't for my father and the way he approached uh, getting tattooed or whatever, I, I, I wouldn't have known. You know, and I would have yeah. still been, I would have still been an angry young man. You know, even as an adult. And so, it doesn't go uh, away, does it? No, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that I always kind of look at at the things and my father and my grandfather and how, how they approached uh, situations. They were eloquent in their words, and they were they were uh, deliberate in their in in their in their practices and whatever they did, kind of thing. So, I hope. Uh, for the future that we can kind of um, we can approach our friends that are tattooing uh, our patterns in mm -hmm. a different way and we can say what are you looking for you know mm -hmm. how can we help kind of thing because we need to help each other not kind of hinder each other and and to us what you're doing is the same thing as what the first westerners did when they came to our country and they're just taking and taking and taking Mm -hmm. and they're not helping us at all it's and we already have a hard uh a road of, of, in front of us to kind of survive and retain and maintain our cultures so maybe you could try and help us kind of thing instead of hinder us brand so we don't our our audience seem to be pretty quiet on the chat tonight so the last thing i'd like to ask you um is actually like from your work with the youth and the young people today in new zealand and maori especially um what um what sort of hopes do you have for the future i mean for them and and the traditions and cultures like you said they're coming back and people are doing more what what is your feeling on that i feel very confident in in what's happening back home you know with it without i mean there's a we we've got we've got problems we're not perfect but um yeah as it's going at the moment i think we're in a really strong place and you know with every uh, revolution there's there's an evolution and every evolution there's a revolution you know so so every time it comes around we're, we're getting stronger and stronger and stronger as a people kind of thing and now I mean, what makes us stronger as New Zealanders as well as we have Westerners that understand and want to learn and 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 it's really we're a young country uh, we've got a long way to go and hopefully we can kind of show the world you know it's everybody can do this you know anybody can do this but um, for my I guess for my youth, I don't know. I have my daughters; they're my closest my youth that I worry about. So, I we homeschool <laughs> our girls. Hopefully, not to their detriment, but um, uh, you know that that I tr we try to I try to implement the things that my grandparents kind of taught me, uh, the roles that we play and the responsibilities we have with each other. So um, that's I can't really talk for uh, New Zealand. I just I think we're in a good place. You know, and we we, and it's the whole of New Zealand that's helping that that place to be a good place. You know, the understanding of our cultures, and now we have a responsibility to peoples. You know, 
that other other peoples and other cultures and religions on our on our lands and we have as native people a responsibility to them uh, and so this is the things that are passed down to us not to reject these people because we're all born on the same earth you know yeah and we you know how can you be a refugee and if you were born on, on the same earth I yeah that's a that's a great question I wish we could put that to all the politicians who want <laughs> you know this Brexit and keep out refugees I mean that's a crazy crazy idea um exactly. ah there's a few people who just um come in before we finish uh from Carrie she said just happy to listen to Tarangatu's story and perspective on Tomoko thank you for sharing Kiora from Ireland uh, thanks for listening. Um, and then uh, there's one from my brother, <laughs> John in Ireland. He says, your questions are great. It says, uh, you are really eloquent, uh, Tarangutu, and thank you for your insight and wisdom. Thank you. Yeah, great stuff. I have to say, just on my last piece, because I, I love the fact that your dad got, um, got you to have a wood pigeon as your first tattoo i love wood pigeons i think they're really misunderstood people think they're slow and maudlin and but actually i think they're brilliant birds they really remind me of my dad um yes. and he used to know when they would come out of the woods and he i know they just don't live in woods but he would know he would hear them he'd know the time of day when they were going off and things like yeah. that so and i just like the sound of them i think they sound great so um, yeah they sure do they, yeah they do. <laughs> I mean, I love all our birds and stuff. My my grandfather, he had a, a, a owl that he used to talk to. And so he would say uh, her name was uh, Henerudu, which is an ancestor owl. And uh, it would take stories back to uh, Rarohinga, to the spirit world. And so he would send messages. He would, he would, he, he would talk to this uh, owl. And then sometimes he would bring messages back and uh, there were certain sounds that the birds would make that my grandfather would talk about that when he went hunting you know that if certain birds made certain sounds that it was safe uh, in the, you know or they they felt safe i guess uh, they, but they used birds a lot in hunting and they knew what the sounds were making because certain birds had certain characteristics wow. like your, you know like your tui which is a what they call a parson's bird it has a white tuff on its neck and they're very territorial so they don't like anything else oh, in its area yeah. all right and if you're sneering or if you're hunting they could they would show you where the enemy was kind of thing so you would hunt kind of thing so you know where we were and brought up we're kind of forest kind of people my grandfather was on the coast my grandmother was inland forest kind of people and and so they're they're kind of gods and stuff pertained to their environment and so uh and so birds were quite prevalent so yeah now i see it you know i see why oh uh, you know he called me like a bird kind of in i guess you know <laughs> and my father's bird was a white heron oh okay quite majestic yeah yeah look i probably would if i didn't ask you this question as well people would probably say why didn't you ask this but for someone who has facial tattoos but very specific ones it's not just like a, a tear or um something yeah. you know it's you know you can tell that they are tribal what kind of reaction do you have to that i mean uh, here um I, I mean i guess you know i don't notice that everybody else does you know but um uh, you you get a mix, mixed kind of thing. I always greet them with a smile. You know that's yeah. the that's the first thing. You know even if you can see I got I guess a little bit of distress. You know in their face or something. And of course you know even my my wife's family. You know some of them find it a bit tough. Uh -huh. They're from a different time. You know they lived through war, and of course they you know they're your elders, so they they have a right to speak. But you know um, you know it's it, it, it yeah. It, it's it's different if i think of i was a lesser person it would really affect me mm. but it doesn't it doesn't kind of thing you know and i understand that i come from a, a a special chosen few and and i'm lucky to have what i have i'm i'm privileged in that kind of thing but um yeah i love it it, it becomes a, a bit of a talking piece sure it, and it becomes something that i can um present 
a case or present something you know people it's right in their face I guess and and I love being able to talk and 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 and, and, and make them see in a different way and know, and know that this <laughs> is still alive and we're still alive and we still think like this yeah. well listen thank you so much and as the the attendees panelists they were saying there how great to hear your story and thank you for sharing uh some of it with us tonight um you're a great speaker elegant uh, and and eloquent and uh yeah and thanks to your daughter for putting the um the mute yeah. on, off yeah. earlier that was great thank you to her and thank you to all our there's also someone from crystal who says here aura always great to listen to your Coro, yeah, I'm saying that right. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, and thank you to Shahira too for um, recording this and managing everything uh, tonight. Any last words from you? Yeah, we are no taku mihi kia kaito e e noho ana ki wate tato korero i i roti te ne po ngā mana ki tanga tate tupuna kia kaito. Uh, Kira te te ingoa tapu o te matua, te tamate wairu o tapu, me ngā nahera pono, ai ne ākane ai. So blessings to everyone, thank you for listening, and um, thank you to you uh, for having me and stuff. Uh, I've been, I was a little bit nervous all day today, um, uh. <laughs> but, but it's been great. Uh, I hope great. I hope everyone's enjoyed it, uh, and I hope it's kind of laid a seed into kind of in, into the world of ta moho kind of thing and um and i hope it poses a question and lays a seed and and you never know what it may grow up to be so uh yeah thanks just thanks to everyone thanks to your team for helping out as well cheers um, yeah. I'm getting, yeah again lots of lovely messages up here now um <clears throat> so you could probably read them there vanaka uh, yeah full of vanaka awesome <laughs> great. <laughs> great thank you again so much and thank you to all our um attendees uh, audience for tuning in tonight and watching and i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did um and we'll be back next week with um matt louder uh louder sorry and um amber buchart and they're going to be telling us all about the immersive world and from the greeks to you know millennials back to now about all the different ways tattoos have been in, in sort of ingrained into fashion um and then the week after that we have um some of the psychology about tattooing so we'll uh yeah please come back and listen to more thank you for this evening goodbye yeah. Cheers. <laughs>